Unit 1, Section 4 is all about the classification of matter. And when we think about the entire universe and, and the entire world that we live in, we can take everything that's out there and we can classify everything into either energy or matter. Now, generally speaking, in chemistry, we are going to focus on the matter part of this, although later on when we talk about thermodynamics and the applications of that, we are going to talk about the energy that's involved with that. But generally, we will talk about the matter. Now, we can take all the matter in the world and we can classify that into two parts. We have the pure substances and we have mixtures. Now pure substances can be classified down even further into either elements and compounds. Now as you probably are aware uh, we have a little bit over a hundred, about 118 elements total in the world. Uh, naturally occurring elements, there are about 90 naturally occurring elements and they're all listed for us on the periodic table. And if you take these elements and start isolating them down into smaller and smaller chunks and get a teeny tiny chunk of an element that cannot be divided down any further and still have that element, we call that an atom. So the smallest unit of an element that retains its properties is called an atom. Now for compounds, we know that compounds essentially have multiple elements, two or more elements, chemically bonded to each other. And so things like water or sodium chloride or sugar, these are good examples of compounds. Aspirin, these are good examples of compounds. If you take a compound and you cut it in half and keep cutting it in half, eventually you get to a unit of that compound that's so small that you can't cut it in half any further and still have that compound. We call that a molecule in the case of a molecular or covalently bonded substance. If it's an ionic compound, we call that a formula unit. So for compounds, we have molecules and we have formula units. Now for mixtures, we can classify those into two types. We have homogeneous mixtures and we have heterogeneous mixtures. Now homogeneous mixtures, sometimes called solutions, are when you have multiple substances and it's uniform in its uh, composition. That means that you cannot see different parts or different phases of that homogeneous mixture with the naked eye. It is uniform. So something like Kool-Aid or uh, something like air or steel. These are mixtures and they're uniform all the way through. You can't see the little chunks of, of, of different parts in that homogeneous mixture. On the other hand, a heterogeneous mixture is when you have several different components and it's non-uniform. That means that with the naked eye, you are able to see different parts, different chunks, like in, in concrete. You can look at that and see that there are uh, pebbles, little rocks, or little, uh, the, the, there's the cement in there. there. There might be grains of sand. So that's a heterogeneous mixture because you can see with your eyes the different phases or the different parts of that mixture. Now let's say we have a question like this. How can we determine the purity of a compound in a mixture? Well we can do an elemental analysis on the sample. So let's say that we have a sample and we think it's it's mostly sodium chloride and we know that pure sodium chloride has 39% sodium and about 61% chloride. But, but, but we know that there's a sample that we have that's been contaminated with sulfur for some reason. And so we will run an elemental analysis on this and find that the sample has 25% sodium, 39% chlorine, and 36% sulfur. What's the purity of the sodium chloride in the sample? Well, in this case, we just take the total of the components that should be there, the sodium and the chlorine, and divide it by the 100% of the sample. So when you uh, add that up and divide by 100, you find that it is 64% pure. And so we can use elemental analysis like this to determine the purity of a compound in a mixture. Hope you learned something from this uh, fairly short 
uh, a section here, section four of unit one. Hope you are subscribed if you haven't already done so. I'm Jeremy Krug and hope you enjoy and are able to learn from my entire AP Chemistry uh, complete course here online.